throwing a football, shooting a basketball, or designing a parachute are all examples of real-life situations that can be modeled using equations of parabolas. Hi, my name is Tom Atwater, and today we will be exploring circles and parabolas. Let's start by discussing the general conic sections. A conic section is called that because it comes from or derived from a cone. And we can see here that for a circle, you take a cone and intersect a plane perpendicular to the axis of the cone. Whereas for an ellipse, you take a plane and you make sure it's not perpendicular, but at some other angle besides 90 degrees, and that gives you the shape of an ellipse. Then, we have two other shapes that come from the cone. We have a parabola, which in this case, the plane intersects in such a way that it does not pass through both sides of your, of your cone. So we have a parabola right here. The hyperbola has a plane which lies parallel to the axis of the cone so that it intersects both the upper and lower portions of the cone, creating what we call a hyperbola. Let's look more closely at the circle. A circle is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point. The distance is called the, cent the radius of the circle, and the fixed point is called the center. The circle, then, has a center of hk and a radius r will have the equation quantity x minus h squared plus quantity y minus k squared equals r squared. So the example we have is x minus 3 quantity squared plus y plus 1 quantity squared equals 4. So the center of the circle is 3 comma negative 1 and the radius is equal to 2. And that's the circle that you can see drawn right there in front of you. Let's jump right into an example. Find the equation of a circle with center negative 3 comma 4 and radius equal to 6. Graph the circle by hand and then state the domain and the range. So what we know is that we have a, in a circle with a center of negative 3 comma 4 and a radius of 6. So that equation would look like this. x minus negative 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 6 squared. Simplify that just a little bit. This becomes x plus 3 quantity squared, y minus 4 quantity squared equals 36. All right, so let's take and graph this by hand. So my set of axes, I'm going to draw here. And I know that the center is negative 3 comma 4. So negative 3 comma 4 is approximately right here. And I know that the radius is 6. So let's take and graph a few points with radius of 6. So if I go 6 units in this direction, that's going to take me to the point 3 comma 4. If I go 6 units in this direction, it's going to take me to the point negative 9 comma 4. If I go 6 units in this direction, it's going to take me to the point negative 3 comma 10. And if I go 6 units down, it's going to take me to the point negative 3 comma negative 2. And so my circle needs to go through those points. And I got a little bit of a lopsided circle here, but that gives me my radius of 6. So that's an example of drawing the circle and graphing it by hand. The domain and range. Well, the domain are the x values, and we can see that it starts here at negative 9 inclusive, 
and goes over to there, three inclusive. The range are the y values, and we can see it starts at negative two, inclusive, and it goes up to positive 10, inclusive. Let's do another example, and the example is the same exact problem, graph, but this time we're going to graph it using the graphing calculator. So we're going to take x plus 3 squared, quantity squared, plus y minus 4 quantity squared equals 36. So let's go to the graphing calculator and take a look at what it would be like trying to graph this using the graphing calculator. All right, for the graphing calculator, what we're going to be doing is using an emulator software. It's software that looks like a TI-84+, plus, but it also has the same window of output as well as all of the same keypad as a TI-83+. Plus. So we will be operating with TI-84+, plus or TI-83+. Plus. This large screen is the output window that is on your graphing calculator. Over here, I have the key strokes for entering the equation. And what we have to remember is that a circle is not a function, but what we have to do is solve it so that we can graph it as a function. And we'll see what that looks like as we go through this, these keystrokes. The first thing I want to do is set up the window for the correct size. So the minimum for x is going to be 14.4. The minimum for, I'm sorry, the maximum for x is going to be 4.4. The scale will leave it 1. The minimum for y is going to be negative 2. And the maximum for y is going to be 10.4. Now, let's enter the equation. And the equation, of course, is going to be equal to 4 plus the square root of 36 minus x plus 3 quantity squared, and then close the parentheses to show that that's the quantity underneath the square root. But now we have to graph y equals 4 minus the square root of the quantity 36 minus the quantity x plus 3 squared. And then we have to close the parentheses to show that that's all underneath the square root. And when we go to graph it, we get our circle drawn as two semicircles, a top half and a bottom half. And I think you can see that in this particular case, that the graphing calculator was not necessarily easier than doing it by hand. So now what I'd like to do is look at one more example of the circle and a little bit more detail of what happens if it's not in standard form. 